Hey folks, this is Brian again uh, with my report from Origins 2019. Um, yesterday, I ran uh, three games. One was um, the Fainting Spirit, which is a hero quest kind of thing, and the other two were uh, Steam the Eye, just some demos. And the Fainting Spirit with the hill, I feel like I don't really have the tools I need to run or to develop a hero quest. Um, I haven't quite wrapped my brain around. Now, I know the basic concepts of what you're supposed to be doing, and it's you know, supposed to be, you know, green or whatever. I'm very mythological anyway. Um, but for, for myself, I would like some rules for tools <laughs> to do those kinds of things. But anyway, um, so it's a hero quest. I only had one uh, paying player who showed up to the table, but I had two. Of the uh, Chaosium booth employees who were interested in requests, see what it's like, and wanted to play, or at least watch, if nothing else. So we're playing rooms. We had the, the three players. Um, and it starts out, uh, they do, well, this scenario is designed to do a lot of uh, like narrative vignette kind of stuff. Well, at least a couple of spots where that's brought out. Hey, have the players, you know, narrate the vignette of them doing whatever. Which went fine, I thought. Um, it doesn't match my personal style of play, but hey, that's okay. Um, so the first one was like, you're, you're, in, you're saving this boy from some lunar soldiers. So, you know, do a little intro to the party of who and what you are and, and you know, narrate a vignette of you interacting with the lunar soldiers because that illustrates you helping the boy and stopping the lunars. Uh, so I actually went fairly quick and you'd kind of expect that to be fairly quick right okay i'm a bison rider i pull my lance and i charge down at the lunars you know something like that. um and but some of them were ready to start rolling dice <laughs> no no we're, we're just narrating here <laughs> we're just narrating we're not going to do any extra combat i don't have stats for these guys uh so we we talked through all that piece <clears throat> and uh the scenario set up for you to take the boy because you're, you're actually on a tribal uh, patrol, not a clan patrol, a tribal patrol. Um, and so the scenario is set up for you to take the boy back to the tribal queen, the Ika. Um, you know, tell the story, get the spiel out, that kind of thing. And then there's another vignette piece about, you know, send me, I'm the one kind of thing, right? But they decided to start investigating right then. And so they, they grab the boy, um, uh, you know, you know, they try to take care of him. He's been bruised. He's starving. He's, he's tired and weary, that kind of thing, right? But not physically damaged. So they take him, put him on one of the extra zebras. Oh, three players, right? we got Harmast, um, Vostor, and Yanioth. And so they head, start heading out. And they're, they're really investigating. They're asking all kinds of questions of this kid. Of course, the kid doesn't really know much, um, you know, about... What? Because his parents, they they freaked out. They just started doing nothing at all. They had the boy and his brother had to start taking care of him, you know, getting them dressed in the morning and helping them eat and things like that. Um, and then his brother took off to go get help from a famous bell, you know, the capital, and he never came back. And then his parents started yelling and screaming at him and started to throw rocks at him and chase him out of the house. And that's when the he was running from his house. Was, that's when the Lunar Patrol Academy so he was running from them. Right, because he was he had been out in the wilderness for like two days. Um, so they're they're trying to quiz the boy on on what's been going on, and then they run into a patrol. They've got a Hamakti leader and three kids. And again, spoilers: <laughs> the kids are all all painted up with runes, not actually tattoos, but all painted up. And of course, they're under sixteen, so they haven't been initiated into either their clan, or their cult. And that's something that I have not been discussing much in my personal game, anyway, because I haven't seen the differentiation there very very well defined. But uh, it actually came up in um, uh, Finding Carol Man, because there's a little statement in there about how the boy had been initiated into his father's clan, because there's a mixed marriage. Mixed marriage. You know, two clans, right? You're supposed to do that anyway. Um into his father's clan, where his mother's clan and the farms on the mother's clan's land, that kind of thing. That's how that whole issue goes. Um, but anyway, I mean, you might do, um, I don't know, 
would you do clan? You wouldn't do clan tattoos either. Not until they shaded your clan. But they've got these painted tattoos on them. So they start quizzing the kids and the, well, not Mahdi. But the Mahdi is just kind of, you know, he's all worn out. Actually, I believe it's a she, but I forgot and called it a he. <laughs> there, there's, again, this brother-sister thing. <laughs> and I got him mixed up. But anyway, the Mahdi is worn out because the, there's only the two of them, and if they're not out patrolling, they're guarding the fort where the kids are all hiding out at, right? So they are beat, and um, but you know they're they're Hamakti. They're not really in charge. They're just you know the defenders, the soldiers, right? So every time the the party asks the Hamakti questions, the Hamakti looks down at the girls <laughs> and looks back. And it's a simple question; he'll answer it. Otherwise, he'll have the girl answer. Um, but I could have stopped that pretty quick and just, um, had the mock detail of the party, um, and Lyria, that's the other girl, Arana. Arana will lead you the way. Because they want to go to Famous Spell. She can take you to Famous Spell, is what he says, or she says, whichever one it is. And then the patrol continues on his way, and then the party, going with the girl, they put her on the other other uh, zebras are walking along. And so they are quizzing this poor 12-year-old girl. <laughs> of I don't know. I don't know. And there's some things she does know because in her farm said certain things happen. She's been at the fort, so she knows about other stuff happening. And but the, the party is quizzing down on trying to find like there's some kind of disease or something that's spreading. They want to try and find out where the epicenter is. <laughs> but I just make random determinations because the boy that they found, his family started freaking out just last week kind of thing. But this stuff started, you know, like eight weeks ago in some places. So I just rolled a D8. <laughs> when did it happen here? D you know, a four, four weeks ago, seven weeks ago, two weeks ago. <laughs> but that was driving them nuts. Trying to figure out where's this you know, all happening from. Uh, but the girl does not, in fact, take them to a famous bell. She takes them to the fort because she knows that the the, the twin uh, clan head daughters are, are really the ones in charge because none of the adults are really doing anything, making any decisions, do or helping out. Every all the adults are are all um, apathetic is the way they, they is the term they use in, in the scenario, right? Um. So they, they go and they meet with, with the, the twin girls and we didn't go through the whole formal greeting, but we talked about the formal greeting, about how she is being very formal in this this um, uh, traditional exchange of, um, hi, this is me, I'm a stranger here, will you take me in? Hi, this is me, um, come, to you're welcome to our home, that kind of thing, right? Or our hearth, something. Um, but after this, you know, whole exchange thing, they go inside the clan hall, which is the headquarters of this old lunar fort. That's where they're at. They're at an old lunar fort. Oh, and there's not a Mahdi. I mentioned that earlier. She's guarding the gate there, and she's got a little spiel, or he has a little spiel with them about, who are you? Why are you here? But that's got the little girl with them. The little girl brought him, you know, so uh, whatever. So they get into the clan hall, and the two twin girls just kind of collapse. And it's obvious that the strain of trying to be adults is just wearing on them big time. Um, they're kind of freaking out. They are stressed. They're afraid. Uh, so the person I said, well, did you ask for anybody for help? Any? Well, we tried to find the, the daemon. And so we had this whole spiel about, you know, what a wider is and that kind of thing. Um, but they couldn't get in to the cave. So they decide that they're going to have to, the party decides they're going to have to do something. Um, but the twin girls say, hey, we'll go with you. So they all go to Famous Bell. It's like 15 minutes away, right? And uh, there's, you know, I do a little description about, you know, everybody's kind of just wandering around, you know, fairly comatose, essentially. Uh, not paying attention to anything. And uh, one of the players, you know, is trying to talk with somebody, pointing at him. Uh, it was Harmass saying, hey, I'm, I'm Harmass, the son of the clan head, blah, 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 blah. No reaction, no reaction, no reaction. Now, there's a mechanic in the scenario where every so often you roll a 10-sided die to see if the mood of most of the people around you changes. And it can be anything from a one where it's normal. 
Uh, they just don't realize things have been abnormal, so they're, they're kind of looking and trying to figure out what's really going on, and they can take care of themselves at that point, that kind of thing, right? Then there's the vast majority is of this this apathetic, wandering around, sitting down, doing nothing thing. Um, then there's uh, a chance of them being very childlike, you know, chasing butterflies, playing with the grass, you know, that kind of thing, right? And then there's a chance of them being violent. <laughs> um, and so they're they're looking around and you know nothing really is happening. <clears throat> One of the players makes a scan roll. Um, it didn't do very well, and so all they see these people are you know apathetic, right? So they go to the clan hall, and the clan elders are at the clan hall, and um, they go in and it says to make a roll. And it turns out the clan elders go violent as soon as the people come in, but there's this caveat in there that. None of the adults will be violent towards children or people with the children. And so they walk in, the clan leaders jump up, start screaming and running towards the party, and then the two twin girls come in and <laughs> uh, Through all the questions that they had with, with the, the twins and with the uh, girl, uh, and with, with the boy for that matter, uh, they kind of figure out that there is a period of time that only people after this are 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 affected. Essentially, anybody who's been initiated into the clan has been affected. But the clan initiation is, at least I interpreted, as being in conjunction with or parallel to your uh, cult initiation. So at first I thought it was the cult kind of thing, and that's the trail they were running down until you found out that they, you know there were some 16-year-olds who were affected and some 16-year-olds who weren't. But some were initiated into the cult, but some weren't. And so that's where the whole clan thing was really confusing. Still is to me. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to work that out for this next one. And, um, okay. In, in the clan hall behind the, uh, the elders' seats is a, a panorama of, um, of, of, well, the hero quest is what it is. It, it's the, the, uh, the initial, um, obtaining or communication with the daemon kind of thing. It's, it's an illustration of how to communicate with the daemon, how to go through the hero quest. Um, and also over the uh, clan elder's seat is this ornamental knife. And, oh, and there's there's some Thay Allen written down underneath the panel. So one of the players can read Thay Allen and it's successful. Uh, so we do the spiel, it actually takes a picture of it so they can look at it on their phone while they're playing the game. And uh, Yannick goes up and is watching the clan elders and takes the knife, expecting them to attack or something. But they, I rolled to see what happened, but nothing. There's normal. Well, normal in, in the, the new normal sense. So, they go down to the uh, cave. There are three adults there. They're acting uh, apathetic as well. And then, uh, okay, they know they need to cut themselves and sprinkle the blood on the door. And they, they do a, the players do a great deal of discussing on you know using the left they're going to cut their left arm and using the knife and they're waiting for something to happen <laughs> but you got to sprinkle the blood <laughs> so I kinda, are you going to sprinkle the blood on there oh yeah yeah, yeah let's sprinkle the blood also since they are uh, initiated adults uh, they know that initiating this kind of thing often takes a worship role and that's what the kids didn't know they didn't know about the worship role and so the players have to cut themselves, spread, sprinkle the blood, and make a worship roll. Well, Yanyoff does it easy and goes in. Um, Vostor and Harmast have a more difficult time. So we start talking about augmentation and inspiring yourself with runes and passions and stuff like that. And Harmast gets in after two tries. It takes Vostor three <laughs> before he can get in. And then, of course, the twins come in. So they come into the first one, and there's this offering of runes. And so another, you know, you got to pick a rune, you have to roll it, and then, yeah, I think that's all it was. And then you offer the rune, and then the rune kind of manifests and then goes into the statue. And after everybody does that, you then tell the players that they can't use that rune for inspiration or for anything except for casting rune magic. You can still use it for casting rune magic. I would have said you couldn't use it for casting room magic. But the scenario says you can use it for casting room magic. Okay, so they go through, and then there's another, there's the next section where it gets really, the, the gets very narrow, and it's all very sharp and craggy, right? With rocks, top, bottom, sides, that kind of thing. 
and it's so thin that they're going to have to take off all their armor. They can keep their weapons, but they're going to have to drop shields and armor. Um, and they scrape on through, um, and because of the pain, it takes a power times five roll to get through. And Yarnyath gets through, no problem. Um, Harmas got through, no problem. But Vostor, he got stuck. Power times four, still stuck. Power times three, he made that one, so he gets through. <laughs> That player was rolling bad the entire time. Mm, kind of funny. And then you get to the next one, which is... Shoot. One, two. Oh, the cave with the champion. There's this ghostly figure in the middle that says, Send forth your champion. And they decide on... And they know from the verbiage that it's an honor... Or compassion to get through kind of deal and so there's a little, actually a little discussion about well do we get a choice of doing honor or compassion or is it honor first and then compassion you know that kind of thing but they decided to go for the honor route and Vostor steps forward as, as the uh, champion and so this is mirror image thing and it's honor versus honor opposed roles but as soon as uh, combat initiates there's these well for the scenario there's two but it says hey if there's only if there's less than four players only have one show up kind of thing but there's a daughter of darkness there and she's like a vampire um, and, uh, in the scenario, it gives you, okay, the Dodgers Doctors are going to do this for the first thing they're going to do. They're going to run for the champion and try and touch him. Touch does a magic point train. And Thrall keeps them from doing anything. I would enthrall the champion. I wouldn't touch him and drain their magic points. What is that going to do? But anyway, so move forward to, to, um, to touch the champion. Uh, one of the players says, I'm going to go to intervene. Uh, and of course, the vignette, or the vignette, the, the scenario talks about: Hey, if the player comes to intervene, then the, the vampire, the daughter of darkness, is going to change to to attacking the the um, the character, the, yeah, the character that was doing the intervening, you know, the touch, bite kind of stuff, right? And then Orthol, it actually specifies at that point they're going to try and thrall the uh, other character. Um, so that actually happened. I think Harmas got enthralled. But Yanya summoned an Earth Elemental, and the Earth Elemental swallowed the Daughter of Darkness and crushed her. And she's only got so many hit points, so poof, she's gone. On a fight goes, 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 goes. Um, at first, Voster wants one, two, and then uh, the anti Voster got a critical hit. Because we're three. <laughs> a critical versus a failure. So there's a, a difference of three. So he picked up three. Yeah, he picked up three. And then uh, a couple rounds of tie, tie, tie. And then uh, Vostar missed his role, and anti Vostar made his, so anti Vostar won. Yay for evil! Um, ghost disappeared, but they get to go on. Uh, the next one, when they continue down, actually, what happens is the entire room, the way I interpret it, the entire room goes blank and changes into this lush forest. And there's this ancient tree, and at the bottom of this ancient tree is this nymph who's dying. But Yanias is the only one there. So Yana goes forward and she invokes one of her runes to, uh, uh, her fertility rune to give life to the nymph. Okay, she makes the roll. Uh, that works. The force fades. Um, then Harmast is, the, for Harmast, the, the, the cave goes away and is replaced with this lush forest. And there's this ancient tree, and the eight bottom of the tree is this. Uh, nymph who's, who's dying. And we have a little discussion about what nymphs are in, in RuneQuest versus you know, other games, that kind of thing. And so uh, that player goes up and I honestly don't remember what rune she invoked. But she invoked a rune was successful in, in, in doing some... I mean, it's Harmony. She used her Harmony rune to um, to calm the, uh, the nymph. And then it goes dark. And then there... Because Voster lost the fight, Voster's out of the hero quest. I forgot about that part. So it's just the two of them. And the, they're back into a cave together. Oh, and one of the girls. And um, there's the the daemon. And it's got this... It, it's freaking out. It, it's all but crazy. And it, it has this little spiel about... Um, you know, feed me and I'll give you my wisdom kind of thing. Excuse me. And uh, the girls were actually taught something about this. And so they, you've got to focus on your, um, 
on something you love and feed it your magic. So mechanically, it means you need to invoke a passion <laughs> and sacrifice magic points. But your passion is at minus 10 times the number of magic points you do. So it's minus 10 for one magic point, minus 20 for two, minus 30 for three. And then it says down at the bottom, because the girl will sacrifice three magic points at 75%, which means she's got 105% on loyalty to clan. I didn't even think about it at the time. I wasn't too worried about it. But later on, I needed to find out what her power was, so I'd look up her, her actual stat block, and she's... So there's a misprint somewhere. Either it's five times, minus five for each magic point, or um, her her uh, loyalty to clan thing is much higher than what's printed in the book. I think I'll go with the five times. Anyway, so she's doing a round of that. Uh, Yaniath does a round of just one point. Um... And Harmast, oh, as soon as, as the, the girl starts to feed the daemon, the loon comes out. The loon is a moon um, elemental, and it's been what's cursing everybody. It's, it's been tormenting the daemon, and that's what's affecting all the adults that are initiated in the clan. The loon shows up, and the loon has a size of 30, so it can engulf 30 size points of people. Um... And when you and it engulfs somebody, it takes a magic point. Well, it causes a magic point of damage, what it does, because it doesn't take the magic point. The magic point just goes away. And then it has a uh, madness attack that it can do on only one person around, kind of thing, right? So uh, the the loon comes moving in, moves over the girls, attacking the girl, and so Harmas interposes himself to try and block it, essentially, but just ends up getting engulfed. So Harmast and the girl are both engulfed. The girl um, loses a magic point. Harmast loses a magic point, and the girl's the target of the madness. Um, it's a con versus magic points or power, maybe. But in any case, the girl misses, and she's unconscious for you know, thirty minus power in hours. Or minutes, something like that. You know, she's out for the rest of the game. Um, Harmast, I think, tries to attack the loon. I don't recall, but Yaniath continues to try and pump magic points into the the daemon. Um, next round, though, Harmast loses a magic point and gets attacked by the ma the the madness. And again, the madness is successful, and so he's out. That leaves poor Yaniath by herself, trying to put magic points into the daemon. The daemon starts out at two magic points and needs to get up to 30. Um, and uh, so it got three off the bat from the girl, and then it's picked up, I think, like three now, from, two or three now from, from Yaniath. Um, at that point, the loon turns on Yaniath. <clears throat> she loses a magic point, but the madness didn't work. So she's continued to pump magic points into the daemon. Um, and is fighting off uh, spiritually this loon, but eventually the loon is successful in its attack, and she succumbs to the madness. <laughs> and they all wake out, wake up in front of the cave. Um, at that point, uh, we're getting close to the end of, of time, so we just narrate. They go back to clear wine, see see clean Leika, explain what happened. Unfortunately, they weren't able to save the daemon, and so the daemon has gone mad. And died, and so the clan is dispersed, and that it, those territories will be picked up by other clans. <laughs> they failed. Uh, my other two, oh shoot, what time is it? It's already 24 minutes. The other two were stealing the eye. The first one was just two new kids. It was a lot of um, uh, trying to lead them along in, in the game and doing stuff. You know, do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Kind of leading them. Um, we didn't have the statue come to life since it's just the two of them. Uh, but in their escape, I had. Uh, the soldiers come out, uh, the, the uh, character with the bow um, was sniping the soldier and you know, actually put the first one down, got a couple good hits. Uh, a couple rounds later, the second one comes out, and a round later, and round later the uh, priestess comes out. Uh, the one with the bow is, is continuing to come forward. The other guy was already way down, has got the cart, and is hooking the, the um, 
auction of it is, is trying to drag out uh, the stuff they've stolen, right? And so he's coming around towards the gate. The other other uh, character is coming down towards uh, the lunar soldier. <clears throat> the priestess comes around, so he starts shooting at the priestess. That's what he's concerned about. Um, and the other soldier then engages uh, the other character in, in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Um, the bowman gets a couple good shots at the priestess, so she goes down on her leg, but she's healing herself, and she starts to buff herself. Um, the soldier, as he walked out, something was going on, did a buff on himself, then engaged. So now they're, they're kind of... You know, the soldier and the priestess at that point are, are able to actually put up a fight. Uh, the priestess engages the bowman. He switches weapons. Uh, fighting ensues. And at that point, we started running out of time. And so we just kind of talk through, you know, beating them and take the stuff home. Uh, the other uh, thing in the eye game, I had a full table for all four characters. Um... Uh, and, and went pretty well. Um, they went up, did some kind of investigation stuff. I tried to keep dragging them towards the, hey, there's these earth spirits here, maybe you should do something. Um, but they never did. But they did take the uh, the the shrine out, <coughs> which is helpful. Uh, and they find the cache of stuff underneath. Um, but while they're doing some of that stuff, uh, the thief climbs up, gets the thing out, and starts coming back down, and they start talking about narrating their way. I go, okay, wait. <laughs> As he gets down, <laughs> the statue comes to life, and so we have a little battle there. I didn't, I didn't adjust the uh, the statue um, like I did for my home game because this thing is ten meters tall. It is giant. It has more than seventeen hit points. It needs to have more than like thirteen strength, or whatever it was has been given. And, and, you know, in, in my game, I actually gave it a cult spirit inside it. And so it had intelligence and it had magic. This kind of thing. So, but, but me and Giant then, which means nearly all the hits are on the leg, maybe a couple of the adamant. And that's how my, the players in, in my game uh, had taken it down. You, they took out a leg and then it can't go anywhere, right? And that's when they split. But for this game, I just used the regular wimpy <laughs> um, the statue they've got in there. Um, and with the, um, the Hamakdi and he's got true sword out. Yeah. Somebody incapacitates one arm and he almost takes the other arm off and that's enough to put the hit points down that it collapses. <laughs> uh, so they, they gather up the stuff. They have to move strength rolls to move the, uh, the shrine, but, uh, I think at that point we ran out of time, out of time as well, and so we just narrated, putting it in the cart, wheeling it out, taking off. Yay, we won! We got all the stuff, and the the opal did not get broken. <laughs> uh, all in all, a great day, some good games. Happy gaming.